greetings today in the name of Jesus. I just want to um, to invite you and so glad that you're with me today. And I pray that you get uh, so much out of the messages that I have been ministering on. My name is Tamaya Judah and my program is HowBigIsGod.org. So if you didn't get all of it, uh, you know, the first time I'm posted on YouTube, Rumble, I'm posted on um, the other networks, Gab, and different ones. You can go listen to whatever your favorite one is. And just look me up and listen to these messages on Jesus, the bread of life. Now, <clears throat> these messages, if you're not used to reading your Bible, and you haven't been in your Bible like you should be, in a long time, you will have to listen to a lot of the messages over and over again. And I just encourage you that if you didn't get something the first time, to go listen to them again. But read your Bible. Study those scriptures that I have given you. You know what? The Word of God is what gives us life. I am, the Lord uses me as a tool or as a vessel. Uh, to speak through and to be able to share with you. And I ho hopefully that I'm sharing with you and that you're, re you're receiving because I depend on the Holy Spirit to minister through me. Now, I have a lot of stuff rolling around in me a lot of times. And so I have to depend on the Holy Spirit to direct those things and organize them in my life. Now, I just want to, today, I'm going to cover some of the, of Hebrews, because it is so rich in also bringing to light what I've shared with you on Jesus being the bread of life, on the covenants, uh, that, that it was a covenant. Uh, the New Testament is a covenant cut in, in the blood of Jesus, that you realize that by eating the word, by um, studying, meditating, and setting before God. But as uh, we talked this weekend, uh, the group that I'm with, that uh, there was a, a statement made that whatever we do for God has to be done in faith. And that is so true. Because it is faith. We have to have faith to know that he is God. That he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. That you have to know that his word is backed up by him. And I'm going to read that today. And that his word will come to pass. Man's word, man says a lot of things. And his word, he may not back it. And But God, when he speaks... He backs his word. He has integrity. Whatever you read in the word of God, when he says, seek ye for it's the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you, that he takes care of the birds. He knows the hairs that fall from your head. You can bank on those things. You can take them to heart because God said them and they will be come forth if you mix it with faith. Now, people in the wilderness uh, that was it delivered the Jews out of Egypt, many of them were not persuaded, could not be persuaded to believe God because the words that God spoke to them, they did not mix faith with it. So we have to mix faith. We have to believe God with faith. Not human faith, oh, even though we have a measure of human faith. Not human faith, but the faith that, that we believe that those things are there and the unseen, that even God that we cannot see with our eyes visibly, like you see me, I see you, that he will back his word and it will come to pass. That everything, heaven and earth, will be moved by your faith. It's like the molecules and ions and all of the, the things that God used to bring forth what the, his substance. 
that brought forth his words he believed in it he said let there be and there was so we have to believe that 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 word as i read to you in hebrews 4 12 is quick it's living it's active that it brings forth whatever you are believing him for if you're believing god for uh you have to have a new car you set your faith with his word whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and ye shall have them now, when, when did you get them? The minute you believed that you received them by faith. You mixed your faith with that word. And you said, it is done. I believe that I receive. Daily, you speak to yourself. Thank the Lord. His word is living, active. I believe that I received, received what I prayed for. I believe that I receive a new car. I believe that I receive my children coming home. And that not only will they come home, those that maybe have run away, maybe those that have gone their own way, their paths. Uh, because we have a nation today that has taught them Marxism. But God promises when we raise them in the way they should go, that they will return. I believe that I receive my children back to the things of God, back into my life, back into a family life that I can enjoy my children and love on my children. Mix your faith with the word that you're standing on. And believe that you receive. And then expectations. When the phone rings, is that my child? If the <clears throat> somebody knocks on the door, knocks on your door, is that my answer to prayer? The phone rings. Expectancy. If you go out somewhere and you meet someone, is this a seed in the expectance uh, to that which I'm believing God for? Is this person going to uh, bless me somehow? Uh, will they be able to give me information that I need uh, to uh, make progress? We're living in a world today, homes are being stolen right out from under people. Uh, it, between the bank, the banks are not even notifying people. It is, we are living in a world that is so detached. But thank the Lord, God knows how to attach us. He knows how to bring those things together. If you watch the news, it's hopeless. I mean, you're not going to receive anything from that. Now you watch it maybe to pray for the, or the Holy Spirit is leading you to listen to something so that you can pray about that. That's different. But just setting before the newscast, <clears throat> praying that something will change because that is natural things. And unless there's prayer and God is involved in all of this, and we know that it is through God's people, through your voice, through your words, through your prayer, through us gathering together in prayer, binding the enemy, knowing the word of God, our rights and privileges. This is what we as ministers have been trying to get across for years that God has given us this word to minister. So if you don't want to hear what God has to say, I feel bad for you. If you think something is just going to happen because you hope for it, I feel bad for you because it won't because we're, we have to, the enemy has been on the has been given so much power because the body of Christ has let down on so many things. Pastors preach the word of God be instant in season and out of season. Break fresh bread to your people, then encourage them to pray. Encourage them, teach them on the authority how to use the word of God like Kenneth Hagin did. At, do, at, do something for your people 
don't just keep preaching the same message over and over because they go to sleep. If you keep repeating the same thing to me, this is why our children, if we don't do things properly and we just nag them, they shut us down. The, the minute that word comes out of your mouth, I told you, or you are to do, and then they shut you down as teenagers. <laughs> and it's like they're a brick wall. And so this is what happens with the body of Christ. You, they become so used to what you're going to say. They, and that you've preached the same message so much they could preach it and probably preach it better because now you are uh, boring or you have lost your edge in so many things. So let's, Let's determine to give God our best and let's determine that he will work through us mightily, mightily, if we will let the Holy Spirit loose and begin to hunger and thirst after the right things. We begin to apply ourselves voice after the right things that we begin to put God always in the place first voice in our lives. And that we hear what he has to say with, to us daily. Now, I'm going to minister on Hebrews here. And I believe that uh, the light keeps going in and out. And I hope that I need my glasses. I, you know, and I need some good light to read. So I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done in our lives. I want to thank you, Father, for making provision. Father, that, uh, Lord, that we're, our schools are beginning to line up with you, Lord, that, that people are beginning to take back what the enemy has stolen. Father God, that we as a body of Christ are coming together that we're activating and working the word of God in our lives, your word, Lord, believing you, mixing it with faith, knowing that, Lord, no matter what happens, that, Father, that we can see things work for the good of them that love you. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every hindrance that would hinder this message today over anything that would hinder God, your people, Father. Lord, let them open their ears to what you are saying. You said, Jesus, let those that will hear, you have to that, show your people, show people they have to make up their minds to hear with the inner ear, with the heart, and to take to heart and take, let it grow roots into their spiritual being to bring forth the fruit that you desire to bring forth. Father, I thank you for it. Satan, you have no part or lot with this in the name of Jesus. I bind you from working, operating, intimidating, allowing anything in the name of Jesus of your workings. You will not, in Jesus' name, you will not hinder us in the name and in the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for it. Thank you for this word, Holy Spirit. I thank you for being the teacher. And Lord, that I speak clearly. And Lord, that everything that is spoken today will be something that the, the meat of the word, something that can be, Father God, um, meditated on and that the person listening will grow thereby, including me as a teacher, that, Lord, you show me things or uh, continue to awaken things in my life that needs to be awakened. Lord, that we all become spiritually sharp and that we have the edge. And Lord, that we come together, uh, iron sharpens iron. And Lord, that we have such a wonderful Holy Ghost experiences in you that we just want more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Now, I've been ministering to you about the bread of life. You go listen to those messages uh, that Jesus is the bread of life. If you eat of him and drink of him, that you have eternal life. So also, we spoke about that he's the whole loaf, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's God is the supreme uh, God, Lord. Jesus uh, is become the possessor of those things because of his obedience to God of heaven and earth that he has set down at the right hand appointed for after his work that he went to heaven, set down at the father's right hand and is reigning and ruling. And he is in a high priest position praying over. Uh, he is actually interceding for the, his body, the bride for his people that they will be on, be connected, that he's the head, we're the body, that we're moving, we are moving in unity with Jesus, the head of all things, and that we are becoming a force to be reckoned with, that we, the dry bones, are rising that the sinew, the flesh, the blood, the everything that's needed has come together that we make Jesus the center that no matter of what religion we are, that we understand that Jesus is the one that died. He's the one that the church is the body of Christ. The building you go to is just mortar and brick. Do you understand that? We, we appoint it, but the Ecclesia is the body of Christ, the living, moving body of Christ. And each and every one of us take responsibility that we grow in faith, we put God voiced, that we put his word voiced, that we listen to him, that we have in us the desire to grow and to become the mighty vessel that he created you to be, a sweet smelling savor, going throughout the land, releasing through his knowledge of the, the knowledge of God, able to share the mysteries of God, and be able to understand faith, how it works. The gift of faith is different than just faith or, or regular faith. God has given every man a measure of faith. These, All these things were kind of thrown together, like when you shake a, a malt up or something, and people just thought they were all the same. But they, ha they are not all the same. This is why people question healings, that they go in meetings, and uh, they question all these things. But it's because you do not have the understanding of these things. But if you will determine to stay with God, to let him begin to show you through his word how these things operate, you will begin to say, oh, I see it now. The light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen and is rising upon his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in Hebrews, it says, I want to read these because they're so important and they will go along with what I've been sharing with you. For it, unto which of the angels said he, oh, let me start here. I'm sorry. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. By the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Jesus was the word. He used the word to frame the worlds, it said, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, he would, Jesus would tell them, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am the express image. Everything that I am doing is what the Father has placed in me to do. It is his works. 
If you don't believe me for what's going on, believe for the work's sake. Believe to know these things are lining up with those things that he's already spoken and that he spoke of my coming. And here I am. He said he came into his own, his own received him not. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now uh, he's seated there, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Angels are here as uh, ministering spirits to minister unto the heirs of salvation. They are not to be worshipped. They are not to be, uh, you know, uh, placed on the throne above God or above Jesus Christ. Mary was the mother that gave birth to him. She was, she had her place. But she was not to be put on a throne above Jesus. Can you see those things? It says, and again, I say, uh, and again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. And he was. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, let and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angel saith, who maketh his angels spirits and, and his ministers a flame of fire. Those that are anointed, those ministers that were brought, that is brought forth to minister for God, that has their words and their mouth and heart, that are operating under the unction of the Holy Ghost, they become like a flame of fire. Can you see that? But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness, of authority, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Now, if you serve God, you cannot be out here doing what the world is doing because he says right here, you are supposed to be like him. If you're born again, you have the life of God in you, the bread of life, and you are not to be doing things. He hated iniquity. We can't do things and, say, and, and expect God to do things wrong and expect God to put his seal of approval on it. It's not going to happen. Then he says... <clears throat> Thou hast loved righteousness, hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even my God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And he was. And, that, and thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. So let me ask you something. Who's going to tell God anything? Who is going to look him in the face, Satan, all of his workers, all of the workers of iniquity right now, that is, that is throwing God out of the nation, taking his name out of everything, wanting to remove his name or anything that would give him honor. How is that going to go over? When God is the creator of all things, that he created the foundations of every world, Every planet, he knows them inside and out. The stars that burn out, he has new stars. He's, he begins to go create new stars. He's a creator. Will he ever stop creating? No. Even when we go to heaven and this, this uh, new earth and there's a new heaven made, will he stop creating? I don't see it. Because a creator, that's what he does. He will create more things for his people. He will create, oh my goodness, things that, that is in his heart and in his mind that we had no not of. And oh, how exciting to see it or to be a part of it. And hopefully in futures, 
and worlds to come, eternity, that there's all the things that are going to, to come about because God is the creator. And they, he says, And the Lord is in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall wax old as doeth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Hey, sit on my right hand until I make thy enemy my footstool. No, no. Are they not all ministering spirits set forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? That's what they were created for. That's what they, they were created for God to do his work and have in the heavens. God is very organized. There isn't one thing out of place. You can guarantee that. Every person, every angel knows their place. They don't move out of that place. They have, they have ranks just like we have ranks in our armies. They have military ranks. There's military and government angels. And there's angels over every section, every part of what God has created to take and to be in they will be instructed on what to do in those things. But the, the child of God that is born again, that is walking with God, that is maturing and have understandings, you will understand these things more. And that you will be able to be a part of that when God speaks to you to pray and command things to come together in certain areas. To, the angels are sent forth as ministering angels to make sure that those things are carried through. How important that we understand these things. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, at least at any time we should let them slip and we fall back into trash and garbage. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, even the angels that spoke the word, God sent them forth. Gabriel come to Mary and said, you're going to have a, a, a son. You're going to call his name Jesus. All the angels that have been sent forth to do things, has, they have carried through those jobs. And every transgression and disobedience received a just and recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing with them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his will, according to whose will? His will. It was God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. Now, we haven't seen anything yet. And I am just going to say, we, God's people, are crying out to God. And his ears are open to their prayers, it says. And he hears them. And there is a supernatural that God can begin to work. These crowds together, all these things that are going on is not even a concern of God's because God, but he, through God's people praying because he works through his people, the body of Christ, that he takes care of these things, but he is able, more than able to let the devil know and put him in his place. And right now he's letting him run his course. He's letting him hang himself, so to speak, because that's what he does. He can't help himself. He's so full of wick wickedness. If anybody will agree with him, he'll drive it to the nth degree, but then it reveals who's behind it. And it says, signs and wonders with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. 
But one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Now, when Jesus come to the earth, who was born uh, in the earth, he, he dropped down a little lower than the angels, but that didn't last long. And it says, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his, but thou hast crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thine hands. He set him, Jesus was set over the works of God's hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet because he was obedient. Jesus, God told him, I'm going to make the earth your footstool. You do what I ask you to do. Complete what I've asked you to complete. And you will sit on my right hand and you will rule and reign. And everything was given to Jesus because of that. But at the end, it said Jesus, when he gathers all his people all is finished that he will give it back to the Father. But we see Jesus, who made it a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and whom by and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of your salvation perfect through sufferings. And he was made perfect. He suffered everything that to bring forth our salvation. Praise be unto God. All hail King Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us. That you went through with all of this. And you did not falter or fail in anything. The Lord gave you to do. Thank you, Jesus, that you completed it for our salvation. We will not have any excuse, not a foot to stand on, dear. We, because he completed, thoroughly purged the floor and then left all of these things for us, every tool in the toolbox, you sort of speak, that we can be successful Christians occupy and do what he says he said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel cast out devils speak with new tongues heal the sick do all of these things occupy till i come bring forth a harvest for me tell people about me and that's what i'm doing today only more so trying to come to to get you to have a complete picture of him and it says, for both he that sanctifies and he that who are sanctified, his body, said you are the sanctified ones, through his salvation are all of one. Now he's brought you into one, unity. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren and sisterin, I guess you could say, saying, I will declare thy name unto thy brethren in the midst of the church. I will sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. God put complete trust in him. Oh, what a chance he took. Oh my, what a chance God put it all in his hands. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Now, this is what I've been telling you. He had to be born into the earth, take part of the same, so that he could relate to you and I. It said he was touched with every feeling of infirmities. But he also taught, taught us that he, you and I could, through his salvation, being born again, could walk through this earth, until we receive our glorified bodies and be successful and not sin. It said that he did everything that was required of him without sin. And that we can do the same. But when we, but you know, he knew. We didn't know what he knew at the beginning because he was with the, the father at the beginning. The word was with him. We have been given an advocate. We have been given the Holy Spirit. 
We have been given all those things. If we miss it, we can say, oh, Lord, I missed it. Forgive me. And it said he forgives you and wash it, wash it in your blood, Jesus. And in fact, if you are walking with the Lord, it's a continuation that when you miss it, Lord, I missed it. The blood just keeps washing. The covenant just keeps working because it's alive in you. It just keeps going. And you know that you know that you know that you know that you're connected to Jesus and his power, his power source, God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, that you're connected with them and that you are his and he is mine. I always tell him, you are mine and I am yours. And when I say, Lord, when I'm selfish, remind me of that, that you died, you died for me and you bought me with the price of your blood. And that when I'm selfish, let me know, whoa, no, 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 this is not being a part of me. So I give him those, those, uh, he's welcome to come in, I tell him, and to straighten me out. Hallelujah. And it says that he partook or took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He had to meet the devil also on his own ground. Let him know that he was, he gained total victory over death, hell, and the grave. And over Satan and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from him. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, you know, living in, even under the law and that and people fearing death all the time uh, before the laws were even put in place there was no control there was nothing saying don't do this don't do that so it was the word of God in in the earth that set a precedence when it could but now it has set the president of the most high God through Jesus. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it come the seed, the promise, it says, come through Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. Now he is able to relate to everything you go through from grieving for the death of a loved one to all the things that mankind is touched with daily or things that happen in our lives. He understands them. You can't go before him when this is all ended and say, you didn't understand because he did. He walked in the earth. He cried with people. He, he saw death. He saw it hurt his heart when he saw men dead walking around what we call living but they were dead on the inside because they would not believe his word he he saw all the injustices like we've seen today even through the religious leaders he called them he called them snakes and vipers he called them white they were white on the outside but full of dead man's bones there was no life in them he he saw the things that we see today, the injustices that are being done, unnecessary killings, unnecessary uh, laws being passed because of greed and because of people wanting to rule their way and wanting to set up these uh, devils and ba altars of Baal and worship them. Oh, how sad when they could worship the king of the whole earth and be blessed in every area of their life. But rather than allowing God to be king and Lord of our lives, we fall and subject ourselves to a sniveling being that was cast out of heaven. And in fact, it said at the end, when he's revealed, people will say, is this the worm? that I served? 
Is this the one that ruled the earth at the time and I give homage to him? You will be so sad that you did. So sad. So shake yourself. Hear this message. Open the heart, your, the ears of your inward man and listen and begin to follow the God of the whole earth who is able to give you life. Satan is death. He gives you death. God is a life giver. He never took your father, mother, sister, brother, or the, the, your babies. It was the enemy, but he will blame it on God. But he is the one that is death, that builds death into you, that steals from you all your peace, all your joy. Everything will lie to you, sideswipe you, make you feel hopeless and that there's no one that can help you. That's Satan. That is the God of this world that you choose if you don't know Jesus and have not given your allegiance and ask him to come into your life. That's who you're aligning with. So therefore, he blinds your eyes and the hearts of those where you can't see. And things look good and you say, oh, well, that's a good thing. Yes, but you don't know the ends thereof of that thing that looks good at the time. But God knows where it's coming from, the source, what is being used to connect or to hook you in. You understand? Yes. It says he, is, he might be a merciful, faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, make reconciliation for the sins of the people, to make it right, that he made it right between you and God, me and God. For in him, in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure, test, he's able to find out where you stand, them that are tempted. He's able to help, secure, help you through temptation. Those that are tempted, tested. Those that are tricked by the enemy, if they're not careful. You know, baby Christians all the time, they, they, until they grow in the Lord, the enemy tries to pull the wool over their eyes. That's why it's so important that you eat the word of God and drink of the word of God constantly. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus who was made faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch as he hath built the house that hath more honor than the house. He, has, he is building us, built, it says building up the body in the most holy faith. This is what Jesus is doing. It's the true body that God can dwell in, that you, that he says, you will be my people and I will be your God. And it says that a servant, and as Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end, that we boldly hold fast, know our confident that our position in him, our salvation in him is a sure anchor, both sure and steadfast, and that we never lose confidence in that. It says then we will be, we will stand to the end. For, <clears throat> for in that he tempted, for he, in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor, help them that are tempted. He's at, again, he was tempted in all points, just like we are. Satan tempted him, even told him he would give him all the kingdoms of the world if he fell down and worshipped him. Now, Satan has those earthly kingdoms. 
because he was thrown to the earth. This was given to him until Jesus, this thing is rounded up and everything is taken back. Then he will be dealt with, it says, thrown into the lake of fire, never to arise again. That will be the end of him. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now he's taken all those, all those positions because of his obedience. Who was faithful? He was the whole loaf, the Lord, the supreme God, the whole loaf, everything that we need. Who was faithful? To him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all of his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, insomuch they had built the house. Okay, I read that. But Christ is son over his house, whose house are we. We hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Wherefore, as now, this is talking about, as I read on, this is, it says, under Moses, Israel failed to believe. And this is where I was sharing with you because they did not mix it with faith. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in, as in the provocation. That was in the wilderness when they refused to believe God, even after all the miracles, all the things that happened. They would complain and act like God, you know, that they were totally faithless. They were like spoiled brats, wanting stuff, but never believing, never trusting that God would take care of them as his family. And in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when their fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works 40 years, this is what they did. They saw all these things that God did. Wherefore, I was grieved with this generation and said, they do always err in their hearts. Now, don't believe, be an unbelieving generation like this generation. Because Jesus said at the end that every person that the unbelieving and the fearful will be thrown in the lake of fire with, the, it, with Satan because that's what he aligns with. Don't you align with that? So they do err in their hearts, and they have not known my way. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Now, this rest that he's talking about is because you believe him, you have faith in your heart, you've mixed faith with it, and you rest in the things that God says will come to pass that you're not constantly going to God and saying, when, 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 or you're not constantly struggling or, or whatever, but that you settle in peace, that God has said it and you rest in it. Do you see that? This is the true faith of, of a child of God that is believing God. You go back and say, he said it, I believe it, I'm going to rest in it, and I will do what he asked me to do, even though you don't get on a work thing because you couldn't work for salvation in a million years. You'll never have salvation by working for it. I'm talking about on your own righteousness and your own works. Now, we know that there's a work to faith. There's a work of God that we do by trusting, believing, and doing as he directs us and as the word directs us. Those works are the works of righteousness. Those come, those come with your salvation, with your new man. You're a new man in Christ. Those are the kind of actions and works that come through faith and believing his word in God. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you of the evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God that exhort one another daily while it is called today. Now, also this today, if you hear his voice, that can be in anything. It's, all, it's active. Something you're struggling with. Today, if you hear, today, if you hear the word, then that will help you. Take it. <laughs> so, you know, we can actually put it in action and everything. It says, 
But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, at least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Now, we also know that he was speaking today. Don't wait another minute. Receive God. Run with God. Do what God tells you. Accept Jesus as Lord of your life and that he has secured your salvation. Amen. Least of any of you hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, for we are made partakers of Christ. If you're a born-again Christian, you are no longer outside the family of God. You are a partaker with Christ, and you will receive all the benefits of that. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end, they will be even more so. Everything... You just can't imagine all the things, the benefits of heaven and the benefits of the new heaven and new earth and all the wonderful uh, ventures and everything and finding out things we've always wanted to find out about God. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. They provoke God all the time. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt was by Moses. Now, we also understand that there were those gainsayers, all of those that come along. It, the, these people that come out of Egypt, they didn't come by the hand of Moses. They weren't led like the children of the Jews. They come out as ones to constantly batter, to constantly say, oh, you don't have to believe that. Where is God? When Moses was up in the mountain, where is God? Constantly stirring the people up, constantly taking their eyes off what was right and correct, constantly keeping them in a, don't you want to go back to Egypt? That's a lot of that that came from them. Those that did not come out by Moses. They were gainsayers, liars. They were people that, that came out, they're troublemakers. They love doing that. That's what they do. So, just like in the body of Christ, we have people that come to church. Just because people come to church doesn't mean they're Christians and have your best good for, for you or looking out for your best good. They could be just spying out your liberties, but you can't get suspicious over that and, and say, well, I wonder where that person's coming from. What's, what's his intent? You can't do it. That's not what I'm saying. But there's people that are constantly checking up on how Christians ha are growing, what they're believing. One Catholic priest I heard, I couldn't believe it, it just floored me, told um, Obama, hey, you can do anything you want to when it comes to socialism because the Church of God is not believing anything. Now, he, he, he thought he was speaking for everyone, which he's a liar, because there were churches that were growing in faith. Churches established and know how to believe God. But to that Catholic priest, what he was used to, even in his own, uh, evidently around his those surrounding him, wasn't believing anything. So he had no right to speak for the body of Christ because God always has men and women of God that is believing him and going forward and bodies that are uh, there's people in this world that you have no idea how they have totally aligned with God and it said one city uh, I was reading about or listening to a, a missionary give a tell he said they barely get the vegetables in the ground and they're harvesting them a few days later so and they didn't have a jail. They didn't have a reason for a jail because everybody was born again. So you can't go by those words, but as a whole, what people were, what the body of Christ has become lukewarm. And there has been a lot of things that the body of Christ has not been holding up in the things of God. And this is why it's so important. And he will start at the house of God. He will start at his body first. And he will sure up everything. 
And he will allow things to go on in this world to make you see how far you've come from the shores of his salvation and how you better get yourself together and how you become lukewarm and how you've allowed your faith to falter and how you're no better than these Jews in the wilderness crying out for God to do something for you and you're not even giving him barely a cold snack. And you're treating him like a message I ministered uh, a, few, a couple of years ago, that he's not a genie in the bottle, that you would call him out when you want him, but, oh, you just chastise him if something happens to one of your family members and treat him like he took your family member. When we know you don't have enough knowledge of the Word of God, understand that Satan is the killer. He st still kills and destroys. But that you want to blame it on God because you have not the... You have become so lukewarm that you will point your finger in his face and say, Why did you let my son die? Why did you let this happen? Why did you let that happen? You see what I'm saying? God has to start with his house. He will clean up his house. But he will let things go on right in your face. If that's what it takes for you to see. Hmm. I better get it together. Amen? I'm going to stop right there, and we're going to pick up the next time. And I just hope, pray that you receive the Word of God today. If you don't know Jesus, go to Him now. And, and I'll just pray the prayer of faith, pray right now with you. If you're ready to receive Jesus. I don't know how many listen to this message, these messages all over. But if I can see one person come to Jesus, it's worth it. Pray with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Wash them in your blood, Jesus. I acknowledge after these messages that Tamiah is telling me about Jesus. That you, that Lord, that you have washed away my sins, you come to this earth and sacrificed your life, that I would be able to come into the family of God and to live with you. And Father, right now, I receive that salvation that Jesus has provided for me, and I accept it with my whole heart. And I will study your word. I will find out what I'm to do now because I belong to you now. I belong to a whole different system. I belong to the heavenly system. And I will find out these things through your word and be obedient and grow. And I, Father, I, and I just encourage you, ask the Holy Spirit, and he's a gift to you. He has... He will give you a language. If you feel that stirring in your, your heart, you feel like there's words bubbling up, give. You have to give those words uh, by speaking them out of your mouth. Holy Spirit, come into me. Be my teacher, my advocate. Teach my comforter. Teach me how to walk in the things of God as I read and study his word. In Jesus' name. Now, Satan, I bind you from, to, from hindering their salvation, those that receive today in the name of Jesus. I take authority over and bind you from working or operating against them. In Jesus' name, lying to them. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave them alone. Holy Spirit, go to work. Bring people across their paths, Father, that will help them that are connected to you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Now find a good church to go to that believes in the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, that you bap get baptized in water, make a confession, go to your mother, get on the phone, say, Mom, I just accepted Jesus. Friend, whoever your friend is, I just accepted Jesus as Lord of my life. He said, you, you have to confess it. 
Seal your salvation by confessing it. Let your ears hear it. Okay? I just pray you have a wonderful day. I pray that all the mothers that are mothers out there had a wonderful Mother's Day. I did. I just, uh, my son took me out for a wonderful meal, me and the, um, the other, his wife's mother and family. We all had a wonderful dinner together. Eat too much, of course, but we all enjoyed Mother's Day and my son honored me and I was so grateful. And I just hope that, and pray that your kids, not hope, but pray that your kids honor you in a special way and your husband, your spouses, spouses love one another for love is of God. That's the thing that we need to do today is love one another. Blessings to you in Jesus' name. Come back and see me again. Bye-bye.